So in this lesson, we're talking about literal equations. A literal equation is one with several variables. An equation with several variables that we can solve for any variable we want to. A lot of times we think of the a literal equation as a formula, and sometimes it is. It's a formula uh, when it's solved for one variable. So we got this formula that's a literal equation that's solved for one variable. Something like area equals base times height. There's a formula for the area of a uh, parallelogram, or we have circumference equals 2 pi r. There's a formula. All ready to go solve for one particular variable. So what we want to do is we want to take literal equations and formulas and solve them for different variables. All right, here's some common formulas. Uh, here we have a formula for uh, converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. So in this formula here, if you know Fahrenheit and you want to find Celsius, it's all ready to go. However, what if you knew Celsius and you wanted to find Fahrenheit? Well, I don't have that equation here. Well, no problem. We can take this equation and we can change it. So we have our formula 5 ninths times F minus 32. And we want to solve it here. For, for F, okay? So let's solve for F. For Fahrenheit. All right. Well, to do that, we need to get this 5 ninths out of here. So this is 5 ninths times all of this in the parentheses. So just consider this as one number. And we need to multiply by the reciprocal. If you want to get rid of a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal nine fifths, and what you do to one side, you got to multiply. You got to do the other side. Multiply by nine fifths on both sides. So here we have nine fifths c, and then we have five ninths times nine fifths. We've got three things being multiplied by here. Doesn't matter what order. So these two here will cancel out. They make one. 5 ninths times 9 fifths is 45 over 45, which is 1. So that leaves us with this. Again, we're trying to solve for F. That's our goal here. So let's get the 32 out of there. Add 32. And we end up with F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. We now have a new formula. All solved for F. Okay, when we're doing this, notice that the C, we don't know what C is. It's a variable. So 9 fifths times C is just 9 fifths C. We can't do anything with that. And then we're going to add 32. Well, we don't know what C is, so we can't really add it. We just write it as an expression. Well, how about this one? Here's a formula, I equals P times R times T. That's for figuring out the interest that you get. P is the principal which you put into the bank first. R is the interest rate you're going to get as a decimal. T is the time that you leave the money in the bank. And if you use this formula, you'll figure out how much interest money you get at the end of a certain amount of time. So uh, let's try this out. Let's take that formula, I equals P R T. And let's solve it for R. Okay, because let's say you, you want to be able to figure out the rate you need to get a certain interest. All right, well, we're going to solve for R. This is P times R times T. So we want to get rid of the P. So we're going to divide by the P. We also want to get rid of the T. So let's divide by that at the same time. Trying to solve for R, so we get PT. And we say, well, what is I divided by PT here? Well, I divided by PT is just 
I divided by PT. You can't do anything with it because they're all variables. So we end up with I divided by PT equals R. I'm going to go ahead and put the R over here because we kind of like that as a formula. There we go. So there's a new formula. If you know the interest that, uh, that you want, let's say I want an interest of $100. And you know the principal. Well, I know I'm going to put $1,000 in the bank. And you know the time that you want to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there for 10 years. And uh, what is the, that'll help you figure out what the rate is, the interest rate, like 2%, 3%, 4%. What's the interest rate you need to make that happen? We could also do this. We could solve for T, okay? Uh, by doing this, let's take our original equation, PRT, and we want to solve it for T. Well, these are all multiplied. So I want to get T all by itself. So I got to get the P and the R out of there. Well, they're multiplied. They're connected to the T by multiplication. So let's divide by T. No, I'm sorry. Let's divide by uh, P and R, not T. We want to leave T alone. Divide by P, R. And that will cancel out the P and the R. Just like here, the P and the T canceled out because they make one. And that leaves us with, on the right side, we have I over PR. And that's equal to T. I'm going to flip it around to put the T on the left. There you go. There's a formula for T. All right. And that's the idea. One more example, and we'll call it good. Here's a distance formula. Distance equals rate times time. So uh, we have distance that we travel equals the rate times the time. But let's say we want to solve that for t. Okay, we want to solve this for t. Well, again, the t is connected to the r by multiplication. Why don't you try it real quickly? Maybe write this down and pause it and try it out, see what you can get. Can you solve it for t? So if we want to solve for t, we can divide by r, because that's the thing we don't want. We want T all by itself. And that'll cancel the R's out there. And uh, we, we're left with D divided by R is equal to T. It's okay if you leave the T on the right side. It's not that big of a deal. But we usually like it on the left. So this is just telling us now that if you know the distance you got to travel, I'm going 100 miles. You know the rate. I'm going 50 miles per hour. You want to go 100 miles, divided by 50 miles per hour, that's going to take us two hours. So this formula is all ready to go to solve for t easily, once you know these numbers. So that's uh, how we use formulas and literal equations to get one formula and change it into another.